हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू गेट एकेडमी ग्लोबल सो प्रीवियसली वी डिस्कस अबाउट द बोल्ट व्हिच हैव सब्जेक्टेड टू सम इनिशियल टेंशन दैट इज प्रीलोडिंग ओके ड्यू टू द टाइटनिंग नाउ we are going to analyze the situation where a bolted connection is subjected to some external load so we will be discussing some uh, basic types of loading which may be observed in a bolted connection okay now first type of situation is a bolted connection or you can say case 1 okay a bolted connection or you can say a screwed connection okay bolted connection subjected to subjected to a direct direct tensile force or you can say tensile load so this type of loading may observe in i bolts okay example is i bolts okay so i bolts are used to carry axial loads so if you have a motor like this let us say that this motor is very heavy motor okay now in order to lift the motor from one place to another place we will use some crane or any proper lifting device so to engage the motor with the particular lifting device that may be a crane we have added an i bolt in the structure of the motor okay so you will be applying a hook like this then you will hook the motor with the crane or any lifting machine okay and then you will be lifting the motor from one place to another place so this is the fundamental use now during lifting the motor this i bolt this i bolt will feel an axial tension okay this i bolt will feel an axial tension okay so let us say p is the tensile force tensile force or tensile load acting on the i bolt now during this if i ask you which portion is subjected to highest value of stresses so the answer is the core area that is the minimum area in the bolt or in a screw will be subjected to highest stress when it is subjected to a, a tensile load okay so if you talk about any bolt okay it may be an i bolt or anything so if a bolt is subjected to an axial load then he from here you can see this is the core diameter dc okay this is the core diameter and this is the nominal diameter d or major diameter major diameter or you can say nominal diameter okay and this is the shank portion okay so in shank portion the stresses will be less as compared to the core portion okay and in most of the cases we will assume that the major diameter or the nominal diameter of the bolt is equal to the shank diameter okay shank diameter so shank diameter and the nominal diameter are the same thing as per the numerical problems in gate examination we will always consider like this okay and i have also told you that in many of the bolts you will see that the minor, that the major diameter may be less than the shank diameter okay but for numerical problem solving we will consider that this is equal to the major diameter of the bolt okay now this core diameter or the minor diameter minor diameter will give minimum area minimum area of cross section of cross section against the external load against the external load okay hence the highest stress will be induced in the core portion hence highest or you can say greatest stress is that is tensile stress okay 
tensile stress will induce will induce in the core portion in the core portion okay so the maximum tensile stress can be written as maximum noted down in your handbook uh, in your notebook okay maximum tensile stress may be written as sigma max is equal to p divided by pi by 4 dc square okay and it and if we want to avoid the chances of failure then in that case this sigma max should be less than or equal to sigma permissible or you can call it sigma allowable okay to avoid failure to avoid failure okay and if you want to know the minimum dimension that is the least diameters required to avoid the failure then we will be using the limiting case so in limiting case we will have sigma max is equal to sigma permissible okay so sigma permissible can be written as sut divided by factor of safety or if the ductility of the bolt material is uh, dominating then in that case we will be using the tensile yield strength of the material okay now here you can see if the if you analyze the bolt so if you take any stress element in the uh, bolt okay so this is the core portion this is the core portion so here the only stress acting the only stress acting on the bolt is the tensile stress that is sigma max okay in this particular plane okay if this is the axis of loading the direction of loading is this or you can say that if this is the line of action of load and here if we take an element like this then this at this plane will be having the maximum tensile stress the stresses in other directions are zero there is no shear stress as well has due to external loading i'm talking about external loading only and if there is pre tension if you assume the pre tension also then due to pre tension there will be some torsional stresses as well but here we are analyzing the the effects of external loads only we are not considering the effects of pre loads clear so here the only stress acting on the bolt is sigma max so if you want to draw the element like this you can draw okay this will be sigma max and hence here this sigma n at this direction is equal to 0 tau is also equal to 0 tau is 0 for this plane also okay so the maximum shear uh, maximum principal stress maximum principal stress will be equal to sigma max that is equal to p upon pi by 4 dc square okay this will be the situation and all these stresses are zero okay and as you can see that there is no shear stress in any plane then all of the planes you can which you can see in the diagram that means this plane if you consider is it as, as a x direction this as y direction and this as z direction so x plane y plane z plane all these three planes are the principal plane because none of them carries any shear stress so sigma max will be the principal stress this will also be the principal stress and sigma z also will be the principal stress so here sigma y and sigma z both are zero sigma y and sigma z both are zero and both are principal stress okay principal stress okay now let us draw the mohor circle just for a better understanding so this is sigma n axis this is plus tau this is minus tau okay so this will be the mohor circle for the given situation okay this will be the mohor circle for the given situation this is sigma max equal to sigma 1 okay sigma 2 is also 0 and sigma 3 is also 0 okay now if the material is ductile in nature then the radius of this mohor circle that is equal to that is equal to radius okay radius equal to sigma max divided by 2 okay as this is this the diameter of the mohor circle is equal to sigma max so the radius is equal to sigma max by 2 hence tau absolute okay maximum will be equal to sigma max by 2 okay now if you want to use the rankine theory that is the maximum principal stress theory so you will be using this criteria so basically this criteria belongs to maximum principal stress theory that or you can call it rankine's theory rankine's theory okay and if you want to design the bolt from the maximum shear stress theory 
MSST or maximum distortion energy theory, then we will use the value of tau max absolute and that will be equal to sigma max by 2. And here to avoid failure, to avoid failure, to avoid failure, the tau max absolute, the tau max absolute should be less than or equal to tau permissible. Okay. And tau permissible can be written as SYS divided by factor of safety and SYS can be calculated by using MSST or MDET. If you use MSST, okay, then as per MSST, this will be equal to 0 0.5 times of SYT and as per MDET, that is maximum distortion theory, this will be 0 0.577 times of SYT and hence you will be able to calculate the value of sigma permissible based on the given value of factor of safety. Okay? So, for limiting condition, for limiting condition, you will get the minimum, minimum dimensions of the bolt to avoid any shear failure. So, this will be tau max absolute equal to tau permissible okay? or from this equation you can write sigma max by 2, sigma max by 2 is equal to is equal to tau permissible now let us think again okay let us think again now if you are using msst okay if we use msst think again okay if we use msst and being a uniaxial loading as you can see here that this is a case of uniaxial loading this is a case of uniaxial loading and being a case of uniaxial loading, being a case of uniaxial loading, what will happen? Here we know that tau permissible will be SYS divided by factor of safety. So we will write sigma max divided by 2 is equal to is equal to SYS divided by factor of safety. Okay, SYS divided by factor of safety. Now here if you are using MSST, so this will be 0 0.5 times of SYT. So let me write the value. So this will be sigma max divided by 2 is equal to SYT divided by 2 into factor of safety. This will get cancelled. Okay. And sigma max will become SYT divided by factor of safety. And this is nothing but the same value which were being used in Rankine's theory. So, this means if the design is based on the yield strength of the material for a bolt under direct tensile load, then definitely on using MSST, you will be getting the same result as that of from the MPST. That is, you will be getting the same answer either by using Rankine's theory or by using the maximum shear stress theory. So, both will be giving you the same result. So, from MSST also I am getting the same criteria that is tau max will be equal to tau permissible and this will be giving me the required dimension. Okay. But if you use MDET then there will be some changes in the answer. Okay. So, if MDET is being used then nothing to worry just calculate the value of tau permissible based on the this based on this equation okay so this is just an extra information it is just an extra information that simply tells us that it is not required for calculation i have just delivered this concept to you just for making your concept very stronger okay sometime it is very necessary it is very essential to discuss things in very detail so that our so that our mind will get nourished out of the concepts Okay. So, the thing is that if a component is being subjected to an axial load, so during axial loading, whether you are using the Rankine theory or you are using maximum shear stress theory that is guest theory, both will be giving you the same answer. Okay. Both will be giving you the same answer if the design is based on the yield tensile strength of the material. Okay. So, this was the discussion about the bolted connection subjected to axial loading now after cal after calculation what you will get you will get the value of core diameter you will get dc so we will calculate we will get we will get dc that is core diameter now for an isometric thread for isometric thread okay 
you may write that core diameter dc is approximately 80% that is 0.8 times of the nominal diameter okay 0.8 times of the nominal diameter and using this equation we can also find the major diameter we can also find the major diameter in mm or in in any si units now the thing is uh, the designing based on the core diameter is not in practice of gate examination it is not in practice of gate examination because in gate examination uh, we will be using we will be using the nominal diameter for the calculation so the idea is valid the idea of using the nominal diameter for calculation is valid for the bolts subjected to shear but if is if it is the question of a tensile load acting on the bolt then we will be calculating the core diameter only okay and then the relationship between core diameter and the uh, and the major diameter will be used to find out the uh, nominal diameter that is the major diameter and based on this value you can suggest the series of the bolt okay you may use a fine series bolt you may use a coarse series bolt okay so according to your answer you are you are uh, you can choose the uh, the suitable bolt for your connection okay so this was about the bolted connection subjected to axial loading now okay. we will discuss about the bolted connection or screwed connection you can say subjected to shear subjected to shear okay now here if we talk about the various stresses due to which the bolt may fail will be the tensile shear stress okay which we have discussed in the previous lecture okay so if i talk about the various stresses or you can see the failure or you can see causes of failure failure of bolt or you can say screw is due to so this is tensile failure okay tensile failure of core okay of core portion okay then shear of shank portion shear of shank portion okay shear of core portion okay and crushing failure crushing failure okay so if you take a lap joint found with the help of a nut and bolt like this okay okay so this is a tap hole or it may be a through hole also okay so this is the nut and the bolt okay now here this this portion this portion in the bolt is this shank portion this is the shank portion or you can call it unthreaded portion and this is the this is the threaded portion threaded portion okay now if, if it is subjected to tension as previous case then due to excessive tensile stress this will fail in tension okay and that is very clear now the main part which is which needs special attention is the shear because the problem is the shear will be taking place in the cross sectional area of the bolt and here in case of bolt we will be having two cross sectional area one is the based on the shank diameter that is the shank area and second is the core area that is based on the core diameter now as we know that the core diameter will be less than the nominal diameter or you can say the shank diameter hence it is obvious that the highest stresses will be produced in the core portion so the fundamental understanding of an engineer suggests that we must go for design based on the minimum area okay because that will be having the greater value of stresses but now the situation is during case of shear loading we have two options we have two options like after i have shown you the different types of bolts okay in the previous lectures you know that what kinds of bolts are there in the market now suppose you have a overlap joint lap joint and in that case through the hole you have inserted a bolt now you can clearly see that 
this is the interface of these plates and the plane about which the shear will take place is this plane okay and this plane lies in the shank portion only okay this plane this plane lies in the shank portion hence this condition where the shank is very large as compared to the threaded portion the sh the shear will take place at the shank portion only and hence there is no need to consider the minimum area that is the area based on the core diameter okay so in gate examination if i talk about gate examination so in gate examination the calculation is always based on the nominal diameter you will be having different type of thread like a coarse thread will be there will be given in the question like this this is the coarse thread which is followed by where a numeric value is followed by an alphabet or a fine thread where a numeric value is followed by an alphabet and after this numeric value we have a multiply sign and we have a certain numeric value which represents the pitch this is the fine thread this is the fine thread and this is the coarse thread this is the fine thread and this is the, this is the coarse thread now in any of the thread we know that this numeric value represents the major diameter that is the nominal diameter so in gate examination okay unless it is mentioned properly that uh, the core diameter is this much mm then you must calculate the stresses based on the nominal diameter where whenever it comes to shear stress definitely we will be going for the major diameter because as there is two possibility there is two possibility that the shank portion will be taking the shear load okay and second in second case the threaded portion will be taking the shear force okay now if i ask you which one is safer so definitely the answer is if the shank portion of the bolt is uh, carrying the shear then this will be a better situation we will be having more load carrying capacity because it is giving me a higher value of area hence the stresses induced due to external load will be less and hence we can carry more load okay so if the shear force is being transmitted to the shank portion in that case we will be able to carry more load as compared to the condition where the load is being transmitted to the threaded portion so this is the fundamental thing okay so for this particular type of problem where the bolts will be subjected to shear it may be a eccentric uh, an eccentric loading problem or a simple problem of direct shear where the bolts will be subjected to shears okay we will be considering that the shear stress is being transmitted to the shank portion unless it is properly mentioned in the question we will always calculate the problem based on shear of the bolt or on the basis of the major diameter not the core diameter okay so it is very clear that we will always use this value we will always use this value for our calculation okay although the shear may also take place at core portion and let me tell you one practical problem due to which we are not able to use the core diameter for our calculation and the thing is there is certain correlation there is a certain correlation between the core diameter and the uh, major diameter okay for a different type of thread now in most of the question you will find that what kind of thread is being used is not properly mentioned okay so here the problem comes that we don't know the relationship between the core diameter and the major diameter also if a certain uh, thread is to be placed over that particular bo bolt uh, the particular hole then in that case we can tell only the diameter because we don't know what kind of thread is to be used okay so we are free to use any kind of thread it may be a coarse thread it may be a fine thread what kind of threads will be there is still a matter of curiosity we don't know that, that okay now what we will be doing we will be, we will be uh, calculating the diameter of the bolt which can be used okay which can be used hence if you take the core diameter as our uh, as our fundamental dimension based on which the calculation will be done then the value will come for 10 diameter 10 mm uh, sorry for the core diameter let us say core diameter is, is coming out to be 10 mm okay now in order to have the value of major diameter from the value of core diameter we must have the manufacturer's catalog okay so as in gate examination manufacturer catalogs cannot be used okay so to avoid that particular problem we will always consider that the diameter which is coming out of the calculation is the major diameter and that means we are assuming that the shank portion is carrying the shear stress whereas if you have a manufacturer's catalog okay proper information is there for regarding material the, regarding the type of the thread like coarse thread fine thread what kind of thread is being used pitches etc every information is given then in that case 
it is suggested if you have the manufacturer's catalog okay and this will be for your university examination basically majorly if you are a student of university of any university you are currently uh, pursuing your b or b tech then if you have a manufacturer's catalog then you will be calculating for dc and based on the value of dc you will be selecting the value of major diameter and hence you will be selecting the series of the bolt okay which type of bolt is to be used that will be suggested by you after calculating dc you will calculate d then you will suggest the series of the bolt okay so this will be the procedure now crushing material will be there as you can see in this connection in this connection this area this area will be carrying the loads this area will be carrying the load okay and this is a curved surface so we'll be considering the projected area of the bolt and that area will be subjected to a compressive stress that is known as crushing stress okay that is known as crushing stress now due to crushing stresses the diameter of the bolt the diameter of the bolt will decrease okay now this is a very interesting case okay this is very interesting case. now if you have a bolt like this okay and here we have a lap joint like this we have a force over here okay now what will happen just just observe this situation by just hold up pen in your hand and if you are pulling the uh, you are pulling your hands out for outward then what will happen this portion will be trying to pull the pen in this direction and this portion will be trying to pull the pen in this direction okay so basically basically what will happen okay due to force acting in this direction this portion this surface will suffer a compressive stress so this will get distorted this will get distorted okay and and this portion will suffer a compressive stress in this the, this plane so hence this portion will get distorted okay now this portion is uh, the, the effect of the effect of compressive uh, stresses is that the, the, the direction sorry the dimension will reduce or it will deform okay so the cylindrical shape may no longer remain cylindrical okay now the same thing will happen with the tap hole or the through hole but in a opposite manner in a opposite manner that means that means if a compressive force is acting over the surface okay compressive force means the force towards the surface then then this will increase the diameter of the hole okay this compressive stress will increase the diameter of the hole okay as a hole is there and you are pulling the plates apart then what will happen definitely the diameter of hole will increase okay and due to this increase in diameter there will be loosening of the bolt the load will get uh, the bolt will get loosened if you as soon as you apply a tensile loads on the plates okay so the, there will be increase in diameter of the bolt due to this crushing stress okay so one may think that this is compressive stress then how, how it is increasing the diameter of the hole so it is very clear as this is a this is a bearing stress that is crushing stress so this will be compressive in nature and this will be acting normal to the surface of hole and it will be towards the surface like this hence it will be increasing the diameter like this and the circular hole will no longer remain circular clear okay now consider a situation where the load is acting in the opposite direction like this like this this is the condition okay now here if you talk about crushing then what will happen again again this is trying to apply a compressive the, the bearing stresses will always be compressive in nature they will never be tensile in nature now let us look into the situation of the bolt so here this surface okay this surface uh, the here the stresses will be in this direction this will be in this direction okay to resist the external load okay now here this will be in in this direction okay this will be the bearing stresses pressure of bearing stresses like this okay now again the bolt is under compression so there will be change of shape of the bolt okay the the cylindrical bolt will no longer remain cylindrical but in in this case the opposite will happen with the hole okay due to this external load due to this external load the diameter will not increase in this case the diameter of hole will try to get a smaller diameter okay this diameter will reduce due to this kind of external load okay so here the tightening of the joint will take place 
So, this case is opposite of this case. Okay. Here, due to this tensile load, the bearing stresses were here. Okay. That is compressive stress, that is crushing stress. So, they will be definitely reducing the size of the bolt. That means, the cylindrical, uh, cylindrical bolt will no longer remain cylindrical and hence, there will be a deformation in the bolt and also at the same time, the diameter of the hole will increase in this kind of loading. Okay. And hence, there will be loosening of the connection. Whereas, if this type of loading is applied to the uh, bolted connection, then there will be compressive stress that is crushing stress on the bolt like this. Okay. I have imp I have improved the diagram. There was a connect correction, a little correction was there. Okay. So, this is the correct diagram. Now, what will happen? There will be a crushing stress on the bolt. So, in this case also the bolt will suffer a reduction in size. Okay. But at the same time, what is happening? The hole is trying to reduce its size. The hole will, the size of hole get will get reduced due to the action of the external load. Hence, there will be tightening of the connection. Okay. This is the simple concept and this is no, not at all harmful for us, but this will be harmful for us. But the problem in this situation is that if this kind of loads are fluctuating in nature, if this is this kind of load is fluctuating in nature, then if it is change, let us say if, it is, if the load is changing its magnitude from minus 100 kilo Newton to 0. So, let us say uh, this is a kind of repeated load. So, you are applying the load, then you are removing the load, then you are applying the load, then you are removing the load. Then what will be happening? What will be happening? In this situation, in this situation, there is there will be a tendency, there will be tendency of unwanted tightening. Okay. Because due to due to uh, several number of cycle, there will be a permanent set left in the material. Okay. So, after some time interval, it may no longer uh, regain its initial size. Okay. And this case, if the load is fluctuating, the there will be a failure of joint due to excessive elastic deformation or if the deformation is plastic in nature then definitely you will feel the loosening of the connection okay and the joint will fail clear now so i think all types of failures are very clear okay now let us start with the shear failure again okay so so here is a lap connection this is the load acting on the connection that is P. Okay. This is the bolt. Okay. This is the bolt. Now, on from top view, you can observe that there are two bolts. There are basically two bolts in the connection. Okay. Okay, there are two bolts in connection. Now, we will assume that the line of action of load passes bit to the centroid of the arrangement. This is centroid of the arrangement. Okay. So, if the line of action of load passes through the arrangement, okay, so in such case, in such case, in such case, the load will be distributed equally between the bolts. Okay. In such case, load P will be distributed distributed equally between the between the bolts or you can say screws okay so the direct shear force on each bolt direct shear force on each bolt that is P s will be equal to P divided by n, where n is equal to number of bolts. Okay. Number of bolts. Okay. Now, assume shear force acts on shank of the bolt. So, the shear stress or the induced shear stress can be written as P s divided by pi by 4 n into pi by 4 d square okay and into pi by 4 d square and is the total number of the volts okay now if if tau permissible is the permissible permissible shear stress okay so in that case in that case ps that is the permissible 
shear load okay that will be that is this that is the load carrying capacity of the uh, bolt in a in a in such a connection where they will be subjected to a shear force can be calculated okay so we will be equating these equation basically so this p as divided by n into pi by 4 d square okay this should be less than or equal to tau permissible now for limiting case for limiting case this will be p s divided by n into pi by 4 d square is equal to tau permissible and this tau permissible will be s y s divided by factor of 50 and I have discussed several times that how can we calculate s y s okay that may be with respect with the help of MSST or M D E T okay now now if you multiply this value okay so you will get in p s that is the load carrying capacity in shear okay so that may be called as the shear strength of the bolt okay the shear strength shear strength shear strength of bolt or screw okay so this will be n into pi by 4 d square into tau permissible okay now if the calculation is based on the co diameter okay if calculation is based on is based on core diameter is based on core diameter then we can write p s is equal to n into pi by 4 d c square into tau permissible ok. This will be the permissible load. Now, if the load acting on the ok, if the load acting on the bolts are known ok, as from here as from here we have the value of ps ps is equal to p by n okay and this must be this must be less than the tau permissible okay if this is higher than tau permissible then we will be having a case of failure okay so from this equation either you can calculate the load carrying capacity or the diameter that is the dimensions can be calculated now if ps is known so from this equation from this from this equation I can calculate diameter so calculation calculation for dia can be performed like this ok just transfer the, just transfer the tau permissible in this in this equation ok so this will be n into pi by 4 ok so this will be 4 into p s ok into uh, divided by n into pi into tau permissible is equal to d square ok. So, this may be written as d equal to root over 4 p s divided by n into pi into tau permissible ok. Now, this will be giving you the minimum shank diameter or the minimum value of nominal diameter that should be there for carrying the given load ok. So, this is the condition through which we can calculate the diameter that is the size of bolt if the load acting on the joint is given in the problem ok and if the load acting on the joint is not given in the problem and let us say any bolt is given that is the, the that is the nominal diameter is given or the core diameter is given then using the same equation we can calculate we can calculate the load carrying capacity of the connection ok. So, the load carrying carrying capacity can be calculated using this relationship ok which is based on the measure diameter or based on co diameter we can also calculate the same thing ok but the values will be different here as dc is less than d as if you if you assume that the core portion is carrying the load then definitely the load carrying capacity is going to be lower than this this value ok. So, from this condition we can also calculate the dc so dc will be equal to root over 4 p s divided by n into tau uh, in, sorry n into pi into tau permissible ok. So, you can see the formula is same, but the answer which we will be getting which we will be getting will be for the core diameter if you if you will be taking the core diameter as the portion where the, the maximum shear stress will present ok. Now, for isometric thread for isometric thread d c is equal to 0 0.8 times of d ok that that means that means d will be 1 by 0 
into DC. Okay, which simply means that D is higher than DC. Now, you can see if you look very smartly. Okay, it needs very good observation, as all the terms in these two formulas are same. Okay, so for a given loading condition, for a given loading condition, let me make thing very very clear. Okay, if if PS is coming out to be let us say 100 kilonewton. Okay, if PS is 100 kilonewton, then and tau is uh, something value like it is like 180 mega pascal. Okay, any value, just take any random value. You don't need to calculate. Then for a certain value of PS and tau permissible from both the equation. And let us say n is equal to three. So from both the equation, you can see these two equations are identical. There is no change in the values. So definitely, from both the equations, same result will come. So if you take the sank portion as the portion where the shear is going to be transmitted, so this equation will be used. Okay, and your answer, let us say, answer is coming out to any any value. I'm not calculating it. Okay, it, it may be the wrong value. Okay, so let us say 20 mm is the answer. Okay, and if you care, if you consider the core portion carrying the shear force, then the 20 mm will be the value of core diameter. Okay, so if it is question of gate examination, then we will take this as our answer because here we don't here in gate examination we will not be using the core diameter as uh, the value for our calculation unless it is mentioned in the question properly. Okay, now for practicality, if DC is 20 mm. Okay, DC is 20 mm, then definitely D will be higher than 20 mm. Then, in such case, you will be taking a larger bolt. Okay, you will be taking a larger bolt as compared to this case because here the largest diameter of the threaded portion will be 20 mm, but here the largest diameter of the bolt will be greater than 20 mm. It is very simple. So, here, if whatever whichever bolt you choose the definitely the size of bolt as per this calculation will be higher than the size of bolt as per this calculation so as soon as you choose a longer uh, uh, sorry a larger uh, element in that situation the stresses will going to reduce okay so stress will definitely reduce if you will go for this calculation okay so that's why while using manufacturer's catalog we always design a bolt or a screw based on the core diameter so that the major diameter will be definitely higher than the core diameter and hence we will be selecting a larger size of the bolt which will result in a safer design okay so this is the idea behind the calculation so if you have a manufacturer catalog so in that case you will be designing for the core section so the so different correlations which we will be using will be giving us the core diameter Okay, so if 20 mm is the answer, so uh, if you use core diameter for your calculation, then core diameter will be 20 mm, not the major diameter. Okay, and hence, after using this relation that DC is equal to 0 0.8 times of D, definitely D will be higher than will be higher than 20 mm. Hence, you will be choosing a larger bolt, and the larger the larger the bolt, safer is the design. This is the simple idea. Okay, so this was about the about the shear of a bolted connection. Thank you.